Good evening. Thank you for gathering for worship as we enter into these three days. Thanks for joining us at home. Blessings on your time as we gather and worship and prepare for Easter. During worship early in the service, there is an opportunity. If you would like to come forward, you can come forward for laying on of hands, a time of individual forgiveness, uh, hearing God's forgiveness proclaimed for you. You're welcome to come forward if you would like. We'll also share in Holy Communion this day. All are invited. There is gluten-free. Let us know if you need that. And then if our worship service continues tomorrow, so on Good Friday we worship at noon or 7 p.m., the parlor will be also available during the, the whole day for a prayer vigil. So if you have any prayer requests, you can write them on one of the purple slips of paper on the information desk, and you're welcome to stop by during the day to pray. Peace to you and blessings. I invite you now to stand as you are able. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. And this night, let us confess our sin against God and neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Maybe seated or kneel. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name amen god who is rich in mercy loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved in the name of jesus christ your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on this night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbors in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. It shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, and 12 to 19 responsively. The Psalms are printed in the ELW in the front section, beginning on page 339. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplications. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
When I get the chance to talk with children who are preparing to receive their first communion, I love to hear what some of their favorite meals are. Pizza, macaroni and cheese. And almost every year there's some unique dish that you would never have guessed. We talk about different kinds of meals, typical dinners, or maybe they have special meals that are paired with traditional holidays or birthday celebrations. And we talk about who participates, how the table is set, whether they have a role in preparing the food or loading the dishwasher, whether some or most of their meals are on paper plates or quickly eaten in the car, or if they've ever set out fancy napkins and dishes. Holy Communion, the meal we share as Jesus commanded for us, we do this in remembrance of him. And this is a gift we receive from Jesus that is a little bit like all those favorite kinds of meals and more. It's a simple bread. Traditionally, it would have required just a little bit of work in order to make it but it would have been accessible to most everyone. And then the wine is this festive drink, common and special, accessible, just enough for all to share. If you were to recall some of your favorite meals in your lives, I imagine that over time, your memories might be fairly rosy, for we are more likely to hold close the fullness of good company, the taste of good food, the joy shared among family or friends or fine or favorite dining, and more likely than not, whether your favorite meal is a one-time event or a repeated tradition, Any spilled drinks or burnt side dishes or dropped napkins or awkward exchanges at the table have likely been pushed aside as an overlooked part of your memory. When I think of the Lord's Supper, when I think of Jesus' last supper with his friends, I more often than not cherish it for the gracious generosity of this gift given. I think of this powerful remembrance of Jesus' love, this assurance of forgiveness, the connection that we share in receiving it with countless generations before and countless generations yet to come. It would be so much tidier and pleasant if we could just hold that last supper as this grand, joyous meal among the friends. But as we're reminded in our scripture this day, it's a part of a whole story. And we hear these words, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We proclaim Jesus' death each time we share this meal. Because that is an unforgettable part of this sacred story. The gift of Holy Communion is this beautiful nourishment for our lives. It's a treasured meal that we get to share with each other week after week. But that last supper, it just likely wasn't a fun farewell party. I imagine it was brimming with all kinds of energy of a group of humans on edge. Such tension between Jesus knowing what was about to occur and the disciples sitting in some degree of fear for whatever is next. All of that and more looming in the room where they shared that last supper. If there were a party song 
It might be that part of the cha-cha slide, if anyone's familiar with it, where it says, reverse, reverse. And it demands a quick, disorienting change because Jesus is always turning things around. He flips the script on how dinners are supposed to go, especially on this last night. He's always disrupting the status quo. He keeps creating a vibrant environment where everything is always changing. Think about how your typical meals go. Consider how someone else has their own sort of hosting norms. They might be different. But think about some of the basic things that we hold in our society of how a meal goes. Then imagine all of that being turned upside down. Because there were social norms that were in place for Jesus too. And then Jesus just goes and does his own thing. It would have been so common for for friends and company to recline around the table. But there was also this hierarchy in the hosting. There was a whole set of rules and customs of honor and shame. And so it's a shock when Jesus gets up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and then poured water and washed his disciples' feet. Jesus kneels at the feet of his friends, washing the disciples' feet. Dirty, messy, weary, dusty. Jesus draws nearer to them, and this host and teacher suddenly becomes a humble servant, just as the host of the meal becomes the very meal that will sustain. Our Christian identity that's lived out in the sharing of the sacrament of Holy Communion continues to celebrate a treasured meal that reversed so many traditions and norms that is done to this day to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, and it is done for the remembrance of Jesus. For on this night, the best is yet to come. Easter is Sunday. The worst is still looming. Tomorrow is Good Friday. And somehow, on Jesus' final night, where life as the disciples knew it, choosing to follow this one who reverses almost everything that they knew to be true, somehow on this imperfect and final night, there's enough. In Jesus, there is enough humility example, welcome, and service. In Jesus, there are enough radical changes to the social scripts, enough clarity in the new commandment that he gives his followers, Mondi, this mandate, this command. Jesus gives that. And there's enough here so that the disciples and we would know what to do next. When the worst has happened, when the resurrection redeems us all, when we keep living in a world unbelievably changed by this humble servant, our Savior, there's enough for all. This night of Jesus' betrayal, foot washing, the Last Supper, it teaches us how to move forward. We remember and serve. We remember Jesus' humility, his love poured out abundantly given and shed for you and for me and for all of creation. We remember all the details of this favorite meal. And then we follow Jesus' example living lives of service, even when it might feel uncomfortable for us to lower ourselves down, to dare to get messy and dirty in the dusty human realities and needs of this weary world. We serve, 
and we try to love as Jesus loves. For these are the gifts of God for all the people of God. And this night reminds us, Jesus shares the wine, the bread, loving, humble service to rewrite the script of how to live and love both God and neighbor. For in Jesus, there's enough for us all. Amen. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God. God, who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places, that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some of for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God. 
God, who is, was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of the exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near, especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, God who sits at the table with us, grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communion today and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith in grace and courage. Merciful God. God who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, you give us so much. Our days, our loved ones, our passions and talents, the food we eat, the homes we know, a place to worship. We give thanks, O oh God, for offerings that support ministries of service and care and compassion. God, you pour out an abundance of goodness. Receive the gifts we offer back to you today. Bless them and bless us, that we will give generously, love boldly, and share widely our offering, reflecting your joyful gift. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. I invite you to bring your service folders if you'd be willing to come gather around the table for communion this night. We'll gather in a circle and then we'll share together. So you can come on up.
God is with you. And also with you. Rejoice with full hearts. We offer them to God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God, there is no time, no place where you are not present. And there is no time, no place where we should not practice the joy of praising you. Even here, even now, in our ordinary lives. As we give thanks, we join the choir of our ancestors and our heirs and all God's angels as they time their breath to the rhythm of joy and sing of heaven despite the world. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. God, our ancestors knew the long road toward joy. Noah saw your rainbow after a devastating flood. Sarah and Abraham found hope for their future and a covenant promise. Moses cradled your law in his arms, and the Israelites found wilderness life where they should have died. The prophets read your faithfulness traced indelibly on their hearts. Your love sent us Jesus and his persistent, irrational joy dripping with the Jordan's baptismal flood, teaching in the crowd's beating heart, tossing the tables of empire and prophet, falling like a seed into warm, dark soil as he offered his life for us all. On the last night of his life, as evening fell, Jesus sat down to dinner with his friends. He took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it, and passed it around the table for everyone to eat, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the meal had ended, and the shadows were closing in, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and invited everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the heart of fear and pain, God plants the seed of our joy. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your spirit upon this bread and cup, Christ's body and blood, the food that gives us the strength to persist until joy appears. Send your spirit upon us and fortify us to be your body too, a wellspring of hope for a world in need. All glory, power, and honor are yours, God of brilliant resurrection and quiet joy, today and every day. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. We'll try a new thing. We'll begin and we'll share and pass it from one person to the next. You can say the words and then the next person can take their communion. We'll pass it around the circle. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Shall eat and be satisfied. 
to the Son and to the Holy 